from CBS 4 News. This is Facing South Florida with Jim Defeaty. Good morning, I'm Jim Defeaty and welcome to Facing South Florida. Later today, we will speak to Jared Moskowitz, the director of the Florida Department of Emergency Management, regarding his criticism of last week's 60 Minutes piece on Governor Ron DeSantis's vaccination policies. We will also talk to Marsha Fudge, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, about President Biden's plan for building more affordable housing in Florida. But we begin with the death of Congressman Alcee Hastings. In her first interview since Hastings died, Debbie Wasserman Schultz remembers her friend and mentor, who passed away this week after a long battle with cancer. Now let's be clear about something. Alcee Hastings was not a perfect man. In the 1980s, he was accused of accepting a bribe as a federal judge. He went to trial and was found not guilty. A few years later, he was impeached and removed from the federal bench by the United States Senate. He subsequently was elected to Congress, where he served for three decades. Regardless of the allegations surrounding his impeachment, Hastings was someone who fought on the side of those who often did not have a voice. He did it as a civil rights attorney in South Florida in the 60s and 70s, and he continued doing it while in Congress. Let me also note, this has been a difficult week for Wasserman Schultz, whose mother recently passed away. And so that's where we started. Let's remember your mom. Tell me a little bit about her. Yeah, that's so hard. Uh, uh, you know, I, I can tell you I haven't been asked uh, a question about, you know, either of my parents in, uh, in all the years I've, I've served in office. Um, my, my mother was, uh, Ann Wasserman was just, you know, the most, the most devoted, committed m mother, committed to motherhood, committed to raising children who would grow up and make a difference in the world. Um, you know, not, not dreaming that we would run for office like I did, or my brother who's been a federal prosecutor for 25 years, but just that she wanted, that she taught us that because we were fortunate, it was important for us to be able to give back and make the world better and help make other people's lives better. And, you know, the real, we, we, were, a, we were a secular Jewish family, but the notion of tikkun olam, repairing the world, was something that was really always, always instilled in us. Um, and she, she really was just, she was always there. I, I mean, truly always there. I could not possibly have balanced work and family and been able to raise my children um, as I'm about to be an empty nester um, to, to be traveling down you know, the, the, the path that they're going to choose in life uh, without my mom. That my parents moved to South Florida when my twins were born in 1999. And you know, they, uh, they, they helped me, they helped me juggle it all. And, uh, and it, that has been an incredible blessing that my children have had her it, as an integral part of their lives for, you know, for all this time. Again, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. And, and I know this is also the first chance you've really had a chance to publicly speak about the loss of Alcee Hastings as well, which came just a few days later. And, and I, and I wanted to spend a little time talking about, about Alcee, because I knew that, that, that he was, he was an important part of your life as well in terms of mentorship and, and, and guiding you, you know, in, in Congress and, and just, in a, I'm sure, in a number of different ways. Talk to me about Alcee. Yeah, this has been a really terrible week. <laughs> and uh, and having, having had the privilege of becoming close with, with Alcee Hastings, Congressman Hastings, um, who was a mentor, who was a giving mentor, someone who and someone who um, was the kind of mentor that offered you advice even when you weren't seeking it. And I mean that in the most affectionate of ways. You know, he would pull me aside or sit me down and say, Deb, you know, maybe you should think things through this way or, or you know, guide me in, uh, in, in picking battles. And, and he, certainly, he certainly picked them like no one else. Uh, being a warrior for justice, standing up for the smallest of wrongs. You know, it wasn't just, he wasn't the, you know, he wasn't only someone who 
chose fights that grabbed headlines. He, he fought for improvements in neighborhoods. He fought for improvements in schools. And when he came to Broward County, he came to Broward County as a young lawyer to really be able to shake up the horrendous, horrific injustices that existed here. As blue and progressive as Broward County is today, that's how seethingly racist and unfair and unjust things were here when he first came to Broward County. The legacy that he will leave, um, and now he is the third in a year and a half of three truly incredible uh, African-American civil rights giants uh, in Elijah Cummings, John Lewis, and Alcee Hastings, um, I, I think we'll, we'll never be able to truly be measured. I had a chance to uh, speak to your former colleague, now HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge, and uh, she was remembering Alcee a bit as well, and, and, just, and she made the same comparison you know, to those other to those other pillars in the African American community and in and in Congress in general, and and I asked her why she thought there were or why she thought there weren't more men like Alcee Hastings and John Lewis and the others. What what made them unique in in their time and and why we don't see more of that today? What what would your response to that be? Oh, I I mean I think the the common thread that ran through that generation. Of, of African-American leaders, uh, but really of, of leaders in general from that generation um, is courage. Courage and selflessness and the desire that no matter the consequence to them personally, I mean, and I'll speak about Alcee really, really specifically, it didn't matter to him whether he had the headlines, although he certainly earned them uh, and, and created them because he, took on cases that, you know, just no one, no one would have chosen to. It, it was really about making sure that his service, whether it was as a lawyer or as a, eventually as a member of Congress, re reflected getting his hands dirty and fully immersing himself in the, the battles for justice that, that would not have been fought if not for him, him being there. While certainly that there are plenty of battles, particularly with voting rights, that we have to have to wage, but there were others that joined the fight, thanks to the progress that they helped forge, and and also because of the progress that they won. As a result, you have uh, the the result that they fought for. You have African American elected officials, many more than were than there were then, who are able to not only fight those fights but also fully engage and, and, and carve their own path on issues that are not really primarily focused on winning battles around justice. Uh, that, that's, that's an incredible legacy that Alcee Hastings deserves. Just, just focus on, on that. Um, but, but quite frankly, he, he was always about vigilance and making sure that, that people understood that you can't be quiet, you can't just settle for the progress that we've made already. You, you have to really make sure that you keep fighting because if you don't, as we've seen now with the voter suppression laws that are being, uh, that are being pressed here in Florida and in Georgia and around the country, if you, if you just settle back and say, you know, job well done, um, then the, the oppression and repression will rear its head again as it is now. I, I think it's always important to recognize that we're all uh, fallible. We all make mistakes. There are we're, we're human, and 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 it, sometimes in painting people uh, in a in a in a particular way, we lose sight of that. And and I and I so I think it is important to remember some of the some of the some of the lower points in his life, including he did go through a, a public corruption trial. He was acquitted. He was impeached you know, as a federal judge and removed. I don't know if you ever uh, not had conversations with him, but how do you think those, that, that experience, having gone through the criminal trial, having gone through an impeachment, how that, how that shaped him, you know, and, and what that says about him in terms of how he was resilient and came back from that? We did. I mean, we certainly never got into the details. You know, that, that trial was, uh, it was, 
really back when I was in, in high school, and, well, in, in college. He just looked at it, looked at those um, at, at the times when people came after him um, as really part of the battle scars you have to wage for, for standing up against, against the tyranny of the times. And, you know, he was the first African-American appointed to the federal bench from Florida. Uh, that rubbed people the wrong way back when uh, Jimmy Carter did that. And it was progress that many didn't want to see. So I, I think what he did was he just sort of shrugged those things off, put his head down, and kept going forward, uh, which is what he always told me, uh, because you know there were uh, there were a lot of battles to fight. And and frankly, he didn't even talk about things like that very much because he was so not about himself. He really never, I mean, think about this, Jim. Alcee Hastings never wrote a book, although he was certainly, uh, he, even though he had so much in his life that had happened that he could have written about, but he wasn't interested in, in that kind of enrichment. He, he wasn't interested in, in, you know, shining the spotlight on himself. Uh, he was interested in using the power that he gained, and he gained much of it, um, and respect by helping to make sure that the other folks who sent him to Congress uh, to be their voice, knew that he was their voice every day. 